by thy name. Thou art mine. That's a wonderful prayer. And he said, but now, don't sense the Lord. God is saying that he, you belong to him. He said he has redeemed you. Let's look at all the promises that follow this. Because you are called by his name and you are his own property. You are that. How many of us know that we are God's property? Because your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You are God's property. God dwelleth in you. As, just as you are redeemed, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. As long as you are redeemed, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Nobody born, get born again and receive the Holy Spirit after. You receive the Holy Spirit the day you are born again. Everyone have the Holy Spirit in him. Even when you are sinning, it's still there. It's just that you are not making friendship with the Holy Spirit. You are just grieving the Holy Spirit. You are not activating the Holy Spirit. You are not asking the Holy Spirit to help you. You still live in your flesh. You live in your way. You, allowed, you don't allow the Holy Spirit to walk wonder to you. Isn't it? Even when you are in trouble, the Holy Spirit is still there. Isn't it? And God is still there. The love of God is from everlasting to everlasting. He has loved you with an everlasting love. But the best thing is to convert the friendship with what? The Holy Spirit. So that you can see the impact of the presence of God in your life. Many of us, we live anyhow. We, we, we sing anyhow. That does not remove the Holy Spirit. You are only grieving it. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to be your partner. To guide you and guide you in the will of God. That's the only thing different. So you are carnal. You are living on your own by your own self, by your own energy, by your own momentum. You depend on your own experience. You are not being led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, in all ways, acknowledge me and I will do what? Direct your path. Never lean on your own understanding. When you walk in your own way, you are a sinner, you are just a sinning Christian. You are not, you don't, you are not engaging the Holy Spirit to direct you. God is still saying, when you pass through the waters, I will read the promises. See, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be born. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 3. Shall we read it together again? For I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Hey, number 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight and hast been honorable and I have loved thee, therefore I will give men for thee and people for thy life. I told you God loves you. Once you are a believer, God loves you. So he will always give men for you. But thank God. Do you know what he has done for me and you? He gave himself for you. It was Egypt. He gave to ransom the children of Israel in the wilderness. Isn't it? But now it is Christ himself that gave himself for you. Let's just appreciate him for what he has done. We are at a higher platform. Higher platform than the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. We are at a realm that Christ himself has given himself for us. Let's just appreciate what he has done for us. Let's just thank him. And that is why you are still alive. That is why no weapon formed against you can prosper. Because God is with you. He is with you. He has redeemed you from the power of the wicked, from the forces of darkness. Let's just appreciate God. Thank you for all you have done. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This is a very wonderful promise. If God activates this promise in your life, you will see the end of this year gloriously. Amen. Raise your voice and sing this song for me and let us take some prayer with all our heart because he said, because I am, you are mine. I am redeeming you, you are mine. And he said, now, it means we have to activate it. We have to keep, we have to key into that scripture for the second half of this year. Raise your voice and sing this song. Magbagbe miolua, magbagbe miolua, kashere masheye, lori mi. It's a wonderful promise that even when you pass through the waters, magbagbe miolua, magbagbe miolua, kashere masheye, lori mi. Magbagbe, mi oluwa, 
voice and say my father this particular promise of God don't let it fail in my life activate it now let it work for me work wonders in my family in the name of Jesus this promise of God that I've confessed in Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 4 oh God of heaven don't let it fail in my family in the name of Jesus Christ don't let me fail don't let it fail because you have loved me. You have loved me. Your word said you will give me for my ransom. Oh Lord, don't let it fail. Don't let it fail. Don't let your word fail. Don't let this promise fail in the name of Jesus. For the second half of the year 2023, don't let it fail in my family. In all journeys, Lord, don't let it fail. In every assignment, let it fail. In every circumstances, don't let it fail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. Blessed, blessed be your name. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. This scripture shows that nothing happens by chance. If anybody says that something happened by chance, it's wasting your time. If God is not there, nobody can pass through waters of affliction. No one can escape fire of the enemy if God is not present there. Because fire burns. Affliction can consume. But the Bible says, once God's presence is with you, no matter the challenge, you are coming out victorious. In the name of Jesus. Success and spectacular achievement happens because God's presence is there. Isn't it? So you are going to raise your voice. The Bible says, it's because I am redeeming you, I have called you by name, you are mine. You are going to say, my father. Say, my father. For the remaining days and months, in the year 2023 and forever, let me be your property in the name of Jesus Christ. Take ownership of my life. Take ownership of my family. Take ownership of my business. Take ownership of my family. Take ownership of my marriage. Take ownership. Let everything at home become yours. Your word says, we are yours. Everything at home, let it be yours. Everything around me, let it be yours. Take ownership of my life. In the name of Jesus, take ownership. Because you shall always say, thou am I. Thank you, Lord. For, yes, Lord, take ownership. Take ownership. Take ownership, my Lord and my God. Take ownership. Take ownership. Take ownership of my family. Take ownership of my life. Take ownership of my money. Take ownership of my children. Take ownership of everything you have given unto me. Take ownership, Lord, for the remaining days, months, this year, and forever, Lord of hosts. Take ownership of my family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take ownership. Take ownership. Take ownership. Take ownership. Thank you, Nashim. Take ownership. Take ownership of my children. Take ownership of my grandchildren. Take ownership of my business. Take ownership of my property. Take ownership of the church of God. Take ownership of Nigeria. Take ownership. Take ownership. Take ownership. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Point your finger to somebody and pray for that one. You are going to pray for him and pray for yourself. Check my father. In the name of Jesus. At every stage of the life of this, my neighbor, be involved. Open your mouth and pray. Be involved. At every stage of his life. At every moment of his life. Now, be involved. Let him experience divine involvement in every stage, in every situation. Now, be involved. Be involved in every aspect of his life. In every aspect of his family's land, Lord, be involved. At every moment, be involved. Do not let your presence forsake this one. Do not let your presence forsake your family. Be involved. Be involved. In every stage, be involved. Be involved. Lord, be involved. In every stage of the life of this one, Lord, be involved in his family. Be involved in his business. Be involved in every journey. In the name of Jesus, be involved. Don't let him be alone. Don't let the children be alone. Don't let the family member be alone. Be involved at every stage 
of the life of this one every moment be involved dear young be involved be involved at every stage every stage of every challenge in the life of this one be involved every stage of every trouble be involved be involved be involved at every stage of any challenge lord be involved at every stage of any trouble in the life of this one be involved be involved be involved be involved in the mighty name of jesus christ be involved thank you lord thank you lord in jesus mighty name we pray to my father in days of trouble and tribulation make me victorious by your involvement hope you have pray in days of trouble in days of tribulation make me successful make me victorious by your intervention by your involvement make me successful oh god in days of trial in days of trouble in days of tribulation please my father make me successful by your by your by your by your involvement make me victorious by your involvement make my children victorious by your involvement in the name of jesus christ thank you lord make me victorious by your involvement in the name of jesus christ thank you my father in jesus mighty name we pray say my lord and my god by the fire of holy ghost dry up every river of affliction in my family dry up now by the mercy of god and by the fire of holy ghost dry up every fire every river of affliction in my family dry it up dry it up now let them dry up now let them dry up dry them up now affliction in body affliction in soul in spirit dry up every water of affliction every water of affliction dry them up dry them up dry them up in my family dry them up in my life dry them up in my life my family every water of affliction dry them up now let them dry let them dry up thank you father lord let them dry in the name of jesus christ thank you thank you thank you blessed blessed be your name let them dry up in the name of jesus christ thank you lord in my family quench every fire of tribulation every fire of tribulation let them quench now quench out fire of the enemy let them quench now every fire of tribulation let them quench every fire that torments let them quench let them quench let them quench now better quench them now god said now 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 let them quench now every fire of tribulation let them quench in the name of jesus let them be extinguished let them be extinguished in the name of jesus christ let them be extinguished. let them be extinguished. in the name of jesus christ let them be extinguished in the mighty name of jesus christ every water of tribulation in the name of jesus thank you lord blessed blessed be your name O lord thank you thank you thank you in jesus mighty name we pray point your finger to everyone and say by the mercy of god i will pass through every month this year without any tragedy without sorrow oh my god i pray say when you pass through the waters i will pass through every day every week every month this year without tragedy without sorrow without failure in the name of jesus i will pass through successfully i will pass through victoriously i will pass through with testimony and miracles upon miracles i will pass through every day week month this year successfully without any blemish thank you father lord in jesus powerful name we are praying i say in jesus mighty name we are praying you are ransomed by the blood of jesus isn't it open your mouth and say my father let your blood fight for me every day let your blood fight let your blood fight for me let the blood of the lamb fly for me the covenant blood that you shed to give me victory let it continue to fight my battle 
let your blood fight for my family. Let your blood fight and conquer Satan for me. Let your blood fight. Conquer Satan for me. Let your blood fight. Conquer Satan for me. Let your blood fight for me. Let your blood conquer Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your blood fight for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your blood fight in the name of Jesus. Let your blood fight for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your blood fight. Let your blood fight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your blood fight for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Blessed, blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Point your hands to somebody. Pray this one because you are going to pray with your heart that in any battle your enemy will die, you will live. Open your mouth and pray for him. Then, my father, my father, I decree over my life, over my family, in every battle I will live. My enemy shall die. Open your mouth and pray. You will live. You will not die in every battle. Your enemy shall die. You will live in every battle. But your enemy shall die in the name of Jesus. Those who challenge your destiny shall die. You will live, but your enemy shall die. In every war, you will live, your enemy shall die. Open your mouth and pray. In every battle, my children will live. The enemy shall die. In the name of Jesus. In every battle I shall live. I shall not die. But my enemy shall die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus mighty name we pray in other words anyone that face you from today will become a ransom in the name of god the father god the son god the holy ghost whosoever fights you openly and secretly they will lose their blood they will lose their hair in the name of jesus lift up your hand and say my father beginning from now any weapon raised against me by any enemy let it become instruments of judgment upon them. Instruments of God's judgment against them. Any weapon raised up against me by any enemy. Any weapon raised against my wife, raised against my children. Let it become the instrument of judgment of God against them. Let it be the weapon of destruction by God against them. Open your and pray. Any, any weapon raised against me. Any equipment raised against me. Any weapon that's against my children, let it become the weapon of God's judgment against them. From today, in the name of Jesus, let it become the weapon of God's judgment against them. Any weapon raised up against me from this moment, my Lord and my God, let it be the weapon of God's judgment against all my adversary. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lay your hand on your say, My Father, from this moment, any trap set for me, arise. Let it swallow the enemy that set it. Open your mouth and pray. Any trap set for me, arise. Let it trap. Let it trap those who set it up. Let it swallow those who set it up. In the name of Jesus. Any trap set for me. Any trap set for my children, let it become a trap for the enemy himself. Let it swallow up your enemy. Let it swallow up my enemy that set them up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any trap set for me. Any satanic work was set for me. Let them become a trap for those that set them up. Let them swallow them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Thank you. Thank you. King of kings. Lord of Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be your name. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. So that is it. That's where we are going. We just use that as a preliminary. To let you know why that scripture is so important. Colossians 2, 14 and 15 now clearly, you know, clearly spelled out. I don't know whether you have 
let's let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Verse 14. And having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them, openly triumphing over them in it. Please, if you have this scripture in Living Bible, not New Living, Living Bible, I would like you to display it. Living, not New Living, Living Bible, that's the original Living Bible. We have Living Bible translation and we have New Living. But original Living Bible, if you have it, I will be, I will be, I will, it will be good to have it. So that we can understand the scripture very, very well. Is it there? Living Bible. The Living Bible. Okay, do you have a. Let's look at. Okay, do you have a. New Living, if you don't have Living Bible, let's try the New Living Bible. Now, shall we read together? He cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed principalities, rulers, and authority. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Now, go back to verse 14. Okay, can we try verse 13 first so that we can understand it better? Verse 13. Shall we read together? You are dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. You can see the miracle of the cross. You are dead because of what? Sin. You will not die. By the way you live, you will not die. If sin is removed from your life, it means this scripture will stand. He now said, because and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Do you know sin is a problem? But deeper than sin is the sinful nature. That's why you see, see pastors misbehaving. You see, any any anybody that's not doing something that is that is against norm. That when with the Holy Spirit, we should be able to relate in the same way. We should be able to think the same way because the Holy Spirit that work in us work wonders, isn't it? reveal secret and the truth and moves our lives. In him we move and we have our being. The Holy Spirit should direct our so that we walk where we do it and then our life will become a, a, a revelation, a reflection of the holiness and righteousness of Christ to Gentiles. Isn't it? Our life was reflect the holiness of Christ to others. Isn't it? But because of our sinful nature that is not yet cut off we still misbehave. Then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. Now back to 14. Now back to 14. Only he cancelled the record of all charges against us. Let me read how one scripture said. He said you were dead in sin and your sinful desire were not yet cut off. Then he gave you, then he gave you a share in the very life of Christ. He gave you a share in the very life of Christ. That is your salvation. So when you have a share of life of Christ, your sinful nature has been cut off. And it will be obvious. Now let me see. So, for you forgive all your sins. So when he said, he took away. Now, let, let me see how he took away. Verse 14. How he says it in the in original living Bible. I'm blotted out. I'm blotted out. The charges proved against you the list of all the commandments you which you had not obeyed he took this list of sins 
and destroy it by nailing it to the cross. In other words, all the sins you have committed before, from the time of Adam up till now, there was a list, a list of all your error. He took the list. You know, Satan is an accuser, isn't it? So he has a record, and God also has a record of all the word of God that you have transgressed. But Christ, having forgiven you his own path, he now took the path of Satan, he took it away from him, nailed it to his cross. The number now say that's your blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Oh, you have given us King James again. Take your back to New Living. Verse 14. So he cancelled the record of all the charges that's against He took it away and nature is cross. That's all the sin you have ever seen. Then verse 15. He now said, Look at this. Look at the way he said this. In this way, in this way, if those records of charges are still standing. In this way, principalities and power and rulers of darkness were disarmed because the charges of rec the record of charges against you, all your judgments are no longer there. So when they call your name, there is nothing against you, and Satan has nothing against you any longer. There is no evidence of any error against you. He took all the record of all the sins of the past. So he disarmed principalities and power. If he's looking for you, he may look for somebody. He will get somebody else instead of you, isn't it? He may get somebody who looks like you, but it's not you. Because you have no charges. There's no judgment against you. So he shamed them publicly by his victory over them. On the cross. So what was his victory over them on the cross? Your charges that was taken upon himself. You understand me? And when he was being killed, he thought they were killing Jesus Christ. They did not know that he was being released. He was dying for all your sins. You know, see, all your charges, he took it on himself and then knocked it off. And then you are free. So openly, he made Satan to be powerless. Isn't it? That is what he has done. That's why sin is a terrible thing. And I will tell you why sin is terrible. But let us pray. Lift up your two hands to heaven. And just appreciate God for the victory of the cross. Whether you like it or not. This is the, this is the, this is the, this is the, this is the revelation of the victory of the cross. That all your sins were cancelled. Every record of charges against you were taken away and nature is crossed. And then you are free from all charges. Nobody can accuse you of anything in the name of Jesus. And you can be manipulated in your dream. That is not the truth. That is not the truth. That is the lie of the devil. He's only trying to shake your faith. To test your, to test whether you know or you don't know. Oh, thank you, Father, for everything. The miracle of the cross. Thank you, 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 thank you for the list of commandment of sins and error that you took away and nailed to the cross. You blotted them out. You cancelled them on my behalf. Father, we thank you. All the list of sins, oh, you destroyed them by leaning them to your cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do you know the greatest weapon of the devil? Accusation. So by this, Satan, principality's power, can no longer accuse you. He can no longer accuse you. And you know Satan is an accuser of brethren. He will always stand against you like he sank against Joshua. There was one man of God who stood again. He was, he was, he said he was filled. He stood again and God said, no, no. My mercy is sufficient for him. So he's always accusing us. But because there's no record of any charge against you, he cannot longer accuse you. So it disarms principality. The greatest weapon of principality is what? Accusation. All the record of things that you have gone. That's why I want to tempt you to sin. I want to provoke you to go into error so that I can have issues against you. Lift up your two hands and thank God that Satan has nothing against you. He has been stripped of his greatest weapon. He has been rendered powerless against me because there is nothing to accuse me of. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for stripping Satan of his greatest, most powerful, most potent, most potent weapon to accuse me constantly before God. He has no record any longer. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He has lost his spiritual authority over me because he has lost his power to accuse me. Father, I just thank you. Blessed be your name. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So on that account, lift up your voice and say to God, I don't know. That's why the Bible says no weapon fashioned against you shall I prosper. Any tongue that can 
rise up, I may rise up against you in judgment. That's a, because there is no record of any judgment against you. This time has lost his battle. Raise your voice to heaven. I don't know the battle you are finding now. Say, my father, my father. Ah, say, my father, my father. Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus, I render powerless every weapon of the enemy against me now. I render them powerless. Better render them powerless. A very serious. I render powerless. Whatever weapon Satan is using my marriage against me, I render powerless. Whatever weapon Satan is using against my children, now I render powerless. Whatever weapon Satan is using my marriage, I render powerless. 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 In my business, I render powerless. Whatever weapon Satan is using, I render powerless. In the name of Jesus, I render powerless. Every weapon Satan is using against my family, I render powerless now. I render powerless in the name of Jesus. I render powerless in the name of Jesus. Every weapon Satan is using against me, against my wife, against my children, I render powerless. I render powerless. By the blood of Jesus, I powerless. I render powerless in the name of Jesus. I render powerless. I render powerless. Every weapon raised against me by Satan, I render powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. I render the devices of the crafty powerless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed be your name. I render powerless. In the name of Jesus Christ, I render powerless. I render powerless. I render powerless. I render powerless. In the name of Jesus Christ, I render powerless. In the name of Jesus, every weapon the enemy has organized has formed against me. Oh yes, now I render them powerless. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Point your finger to heaven and say, My Father, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every weapon of the wicked that they be deployed against me from this moment, let them back fire. Let them back fire. Let them back fire from today. Any weapon anybody may deploy against me. Any weapon anyone may deploy against my wife and my children. From now, let them back fire. Automatic back fire. Let them boomerang. Let them back fire. Let their weapon back fire. Let their instrument boomerang. Let them boomerang. Let them boomerang. Let them boomerang. Let them backfire. Let them backfire. Let them backfire. Any weapon, anybody, any wicked, any witch, may raise up against me, against my family. From now, let them boomerang. Let them backfire by fire. Let them backfire. Let them backfire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let them backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Let them backfire in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Let blessed be your name. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Let them backfire in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Better pray very well because you need to pray with understanding. If no weapon can work against you, better tell them. And they will see from it. They will see gather. The Bible says, surely they will gather together. Not by me. But those that gather against you, they will do fall for your sake. If you that, that, that if you don't do anything about it, point your finger to heaven. In the name of Jesus, say every dangerous source, dangerous source of wicked powers, wicked weapons, work against me. Catch fire now! Let the source catch fire. The source of dangerous weapon and send just power, dangerous battle. Let the source catch fire. Let the shrine catch fire. Let the altar catch fire. Open your altar pray. Let the source of dangerous weapon that the enemy has orchestrated against me. Dangerous battle against me. Let the source catch fire. 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 Let it catch fire. Source of dangerous weapon. Source of dangerous battle. Source of evil power. Against me, I command you to cast fire. Source of danger about you against my chain. I say, cast fire, cast fire, cast fire. Source of dangerous battle against my money. Cast fire, 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 cast fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. 
in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, my children, we pray. Do you know? I've seen people, they threaten and they said it's too late for him to pray. Because they have programmed the arrow and the arrow is already set through. All the signs are there that the arrow will be doing the work. They check the marriage, they say that there is battle in the house. They say it's too late. Because the enemy will try. I learned it from experience. They will try you to make sure that you are not praying before they fire the arrow. Unbelievers, the Gentiles, the occultic people, they know the power that a Christian carry. So before they do anything, they will make sure you sleep too much, you eat too much when you are supposed to be fasting dry, you will break your fast at 12 o'clock. They will manipulate you all sort of nonsense so that you will be weak. So that the arrow, if it get, if, if they, because they, if they make mistake, it's coming back. They know it's coming back. They know the truth. They now told this man, it's too late for you to pray. And he came to me and said, they told you, it's too late to pray. Ah, they are programmed, the arrows are succeeded. There are many people carrying affliction that does not show up. They finish it. Affliction, sickness, that, eh, that's why you just hear, you just, you just rush him to the hospital suddenly. He was in church now. And before they know it, it's a terrible thing. Some people are carrying problems that are not their pair. They are already there. The enemy programmed them a long time ago. But the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. I will contend with those that contend with you. And I will save your children. And the only one we know, I am the Redeemer. The only one of Jacob. Because their righteousness is of me. Says the Lord. You know when he said the righteousness is of me. He was pointing them to what he did at the cross of Calvary. That I took their sin on my own body. And I've loved them with everlasting love. And nothing. Even though they were priests to the terrible because of their sin. They have become captive to the warrior because of their ignorance. But today, those who contend with you, I will contend with them. I said, God will contend with those who contend with you. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, I told the woman, those who say you will not get deliverance in this matter, they will be your ransom. Amen. Within three days, they begin to die in, in the family and in Ramba. He said, a mother-in-law died. I said, don't cry. If anybody die in your family, don't cry. Whosoever does not want you to live, must not live. Anyone that is struggling with the ladder of your destiny is not entitled to live. In the name of Jesus, say my father, anyone, anywhere that is struggling with the ladder of my destiny, let them collapse, let them die, let them collapse, let them die, let them collapse, let them die, let them die. Let them die. Let them die. Any man, any woman struggling with the ladder of my destiny, let them die, let them collapse, let them die. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Point your finger to say my father, my father. Anyone, any man, any woman, any power that says it is too late for me to get my deliverance. By the power and the blood of Jesus. I declare them as the victim of their own war against me. I declare them as victim of their own weapon against me. I declare them as weapon, as victim of their own battle against me. Open your mouth and pray. Whosoever says too late for me to get deliverance, I declare them victim of the evil they have prepared for me. I declare them the victim of the arrow they have programmed for me. In the name of Jesus, I declare them as victim. Thank you, Father Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say, my Father, my Father, every
every household enemy, every household enemy at war with my children. If they don't repent now, let them die in shame. Open your mouth and pray. If they don't repent now, let them die in shame. Household enemy at war with my children. If they don't repent now, let them die in shame. Household enemy at war with the marriage of my children. If they don't repent, let them die. Let them die shamefully. Let them lose their life. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Let's take this one. Lift up your hands to heaven and say, My Father, my Father, any battle that has been rendered against me, every problem that has been set against my life that has not yet appeared, swallow them up now. Every sickness that has been programmed into my life that has not yet appeared, swallow them up now. Swallow them up. Any battle orchestrated that has not started, Every war that the enemy is fighting in the spirit that I don't know about now, swallow them up now. Swallow the virtue that has not yet appeared. Swallow the problem that has not yet appeared. Swallow the sickness that has not yet appeared. Swallow the arrow that has not yet landed. Swallow them up. Swallow them up. Swallow them up. Swallow up every battle that is yet to appear. Swallow up every sickness that has not yet appeared. Swallow them up. Swallow them up. Every arrow that is on the way that has not yet arrived, swallow them up. Swallow them. Anything programmed against my children that had not yet happened, swallow them. Swallow them up. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Swallow them up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, point your finger to a friend and pray for him that from today, no power from the pit of hell, no power from any altar shall be permitted to use your sin against you, to use your weakness against you, to use your error against you, to use your mistake against you. In the mighty name of Jesus, no power from the pit of hell shall be permitted to you to save your children against them, their mistake against them. No power from the pit of hell shall be, shall be allowed, shall be permitted to use your error, the error of your children against them. No power from the pit of hell shall be permitted to use the mistake of your husband against you, against them. No power from the pit of hell. No spirit, no principality shall be permitted to use your weakness, your error, your sin, your word, your statement against you. Your, your, your influence, your pride against you. No power shall be permitted to use your weakness against you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Ah, this prayer we pray yesterday night. Look, if, one, if God wants to disgrace a person, if the, if the joy of salvation, if the redeeming power of the blood, God just decides to over, look, at, look at another side. Look at David. Look at how he saved him. He, he killed Goliath. A Goliath. Isn't it? And they brought a scenario. There's a man who did it. He didn't even look at himself. If God does not help you, you'll be in trouble. He didn't even look at himself at all at the sinner. And the scenario was very programmed. He said he has four. He has many lambs. Many, many lambs. And a visitor came. And instead of going to one of the lambs that he has to keep, he went to the one that only one has. He put on the lambs. They kissed themselves together. He will know that if I deny this one, what will he kiss tomorrow? What will be? He will be lonely. He still went to that one. David got angry. David was. He said, that one shy. 
guy. And God said, no, you are the one. Ah, he now recognizes. Ah, ah, That's why if you don't, cannot see your own mistake, and they are complaining about you, and you can't see your mistake, you're already going. You're already going. You're already on your way going. If they correct you, better listen. That's why you are going to pray. When they were running prophecy in Nigeria in the last one year, I was afraid that I can never, if the prophecy fail, what would you do? They ask, if God allow your error to succeed, you are finished. Lay your hand on your head. We all make mistakes, but God will help you like he helped David. He just walk into his life and say, hey, 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 you are going to <laughs> that's why when he's talking about mercy he knew what mercy means a stubborn sinner a wicked sinner self-righteous sinner is David he was a holy, uh, he, he, the foundation is Pharisee you know the Pharisees do you know Pharisee if you go to get them, go and read Acts chapter 15 from verse 3 to 6 you will see what the Pharisee did there they preach to the Gentiles. The Gentiles receive Holy Ghost. And they were so angry that they have to go through the baptism. They have to go through the, the sacrifice of uh, Moses. Peter was saying that Holy Ghost, that not bad, not it by God has already said to them, they don't need to go to ritual again. They said, no, they have to go to ritual because they were of the order of Pharisee. The order of Pharisee. David was of the order of Pharisee. He didn't see his own error. When you are carrying the spirit of the flesh, when your sinful nature has not yet been cut off, you will see, behave like that. Let me tell you before you pray that last prayer. When you are seeing sin after salvation, you create four problems. Number one, you are separated from God. Immediately, you will cry. The hair will be heavy. You cannot hear. The hand will be short. It cannot touch you. When you are saved and you go back to your family, you are separated from God. That's number one. Now, say number two. You want to know number two? There is evil of sin. The evil of your sin. If you sleep with somebody's wife, you can contact disease. You carry all the costs in the life of that one. Isn't it? That is the evil of your sin. Now, that's an, to deliver yourself from that one is another problem. I don't know how you will get out. Only God can set you free. You understand me? That's the evil of the sin you committed. But say number three. Then see the judgment of God that is written against the word you violate. You see, in Colossians that we read, he said all the record of the scriptures that you have violated, he took them and he nailed them to the cross. You are now building up sin again. You are building them again. And the record with there. Satan will now be happy. The hammer that has been taken away is back. It's back. The hammer is back. And it will now mess, mess you up. And your destiny is the target. You will now be struggling. One year, no change. Two years, no change. Three years, no change. And then the next thing is deliverance you need. Isn't it? Because he promised deliverance in Isaiah 57. If you read verse 12, 13, 14 to 16, he said, when you have went out, when you go and say and come back, he will deliver you. Now the problem is deliverance. And without wholeness, serving God with all your heart, no deliverance will come. Deliverance grows with holiness. Takes you back to the cross. It's not the kind of deliverance we are talking about. You understand me? And then the last thing is restoration. How do you get restored? All the things you have lost since the day of sin. How do you get that restoration? You give yourself more problems. The battle you create for yourself is more than the one Satan creates. Because to move through the standard of God, to receive everything back, you have to become an evangelist. You have to become what? You have to become a true prophet. A true prophet. <laughs> Lift up your two hands to heaven. Every sin you want to commit now will no longer succeed. Yeah. Every lie you want to tell now, you will be arrested before you finish. Yeah. Every fornication you want to go into, in the name of Jesus, your, your body will react. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, my father, my father, from today, every error it I make, every mistake I make, don't let them succeed. Open your mouth and pray. Don't let my mistakes succeed. Don't let the mistake of my children succeed. Don't let my error succeed in the mighty name. Don't let my sin succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless, bless be.
Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I decree over your life in this second half of the year as we enter into July. In a few hours, nothing will stop you again. In the name of Jesus. The enemy will look around and will not find any weapon against to be used. In the mighty name of Jesus. Only the enemy that are doomed to die. In order that you may live. They will be the one that Satan will give confidence to confront you. In the name of Jesus. And whosoever contend with you from today, you are not the one that will go to do to contention. You are no longer going to fight because you have already prayed. God will contend with them. Whosoever raise any weapon against you, God will arise and take the weapon and use against them. In the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be well with your children. Over your children, you will rejoice. You will jubilate. The next testimony will come from them. In the name of Jesus, wherever you go, you will experience divine involvement divine ownership. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Three powerful. Amen. Amen.